So this is really exciting. We just got in our Miati 12 volt, 20 amp hour battery. So we're gonna do an actual unboxing this time. We can see exactly the packaging that came in. All right, so we've got Amazon's standard bubble wrap. And then we have the battery itself coming in another box. We're gonna open this up. Look at this. We've got a lithium ion battery or lithium phosphate battery reliable solution provider. A little mini manual. We've got a couple of these, which are going to be our posts for the battery. And then in bubble wrap, we have our newest Miati battery for testing. So again, this is the 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate 12 volt Miati battery. Now look at this. This is actually kind of cool. It's got a little handle on the top. So, you know, it's still a lightweight battery, but I can just hold it with this little handle. It's kind of cute. And we have our two posts, our positive terminal and our negative terminal. We're going to do a quick voltage check. And see what we're getting. Okay, so we're reading 13.27. Check and make sure we see in here. Oh yeah, yeah, we're great. So this battery actually came relatively charged. It's in great shape. While the packaging again is not super great, the battery itself looks great. I don't see any damage. It looks brand new and Again, we've got this cute little handle. So, we're gonna get started with some tests. We'll get it up to charge. We'll check the over voltage cutoff. We'll do a full capacity test to make sure we can get all 20 amp hours out of the battery. We might cycle it a few times because I know some of these batteries like to be cycled a few times to really climb up to that full capacity. But we'll try and do a full capacity test and then we will see how many amps we can pull out of this battery with our favorite test, the cotton candy machine. So thanks for watching and let's move on to the first test. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with our over voltage disconnect testing. Basically, we've got this nice and charged. We're gonna slowly up the amps going into the battery. Probably we'll go about two amps. And then we're gonna see where the over voltage disconnect kicks in on this battery. So after filming this segment, I checked the manual for this battery. It says do not charge over 14 volts. So that 14.3 cutoff is actually intentional. All right, so let's start with my favorite test, the discharge test. We're gonna see if we can pull over one C out of this battery for a number of minutes, enough time to make cotton candy with our cotton candy machine here. So this cotton candy machine uses 475 watts on average, 25 to spin the motor, and another 450 on the heating element inside. If we can make a load of cotton candy with this, it'll prove that the battery is strong enough to pull that greater than 1C current. So we have life. We can see that the battery started at 480 watts coming out. We're now sitting pretty at 475, 474-ish. And we're going to run this long enough to heat the heating element within the cotton candy machine. Once that's done, we'll pour in our flossing sugar and we'll see if we can actually make a load of cotton candy. Alrighty, so we've let the battery run for about five minutes. 
That's enough time to heat up the heating element within the cotton candy machine. Let's throw in our flossing sugar and see if it's actually gotten there. Alrighty, I think it's pretty clear that this test is a success. We managed to pull 475 watt hours for about six minutes, long enough to make this pot piece of cotton candy. So now we have our battery hooked up to our capacity tester, and we're going to run the capacity at 0.2 C discharge rate. So basically what we're looking at is one fifth of the total amp hour capacity of the battery that we're gonna pull out which is four amps on a constant current discharge. Our battery is now sitting at 13.6, which is where about where we'd like to be for this test. So we'll get started. So the first thing I'm noticing here is a pretty significant voltage drop. We're already down to 13 volts. So we're about 35 minutes shy of the halfway point. We're holding strong. And we'll check back in a little bit. Alrighty, we are 3 hours and 43 minutes in, still going strong, and we'll see what happens. Looks like we've cut out early at 18.6 amp hours, 237 watt hours for this battery. So let's take a look at what our voltmeter is saying in the shot. So that is the end of this battery. So let's talk about something really annoying with this battery. This battery's over voltage disconnect cuts off at just above 14.2 volts. Now the standard for lithium iron phosphate is around 14.6 volts. While this most assuredly will help increase the longevity of the battery, the fact that we can't charge it quickly is really, really annoying. I actually had to get a new solar charge controller this PWM controller you see before me, so that I could get something that would actually charge this battery, because all of my other charge controllers are configured to charge at the accepted lithium iron phosphate rate. So here are my overall thoughts for the Miati 12 volt 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. First, the positive. I really like the form factor of this battery. It looks great and is lightweight. The fact that it has screw in terminal connectors makes this a lot easier to use than the 16 amp hour battery. I typically don't move my batteries around a lot, but I still like the little handle as well. I also prefer the tower setup that they're using with this battery. This makes them much more easily stacked if you're running the batteries in series or parallel. The battery also performed very well in our discharge test, showing that it can easily maintain a near 2C discharge rate. Now the not so good. I'm super disappointed with this battery's over voltage disconnect. It feels like someone input the wrong number and dropped the battery down to 14.3 when the cutoff was meant to be 15.3 volts. This cutoff voltage is such a hassle that it really makes this battery a pain to charge. Not only will we have a much slower charging rate with a limited absorption voltage, but it also won't work with a standard lithium iron phosphate charge configuration. This battery also did poorly in our capacity tests, though frankly, I think that's related to the charging parameters. I'm certain with more patience, and a customized charge profile, I could probably pull full capacity. I just don't think it's worth the effort. Overall, I wouldn't recommend this battery when you could buy the 16 amp hour or the 36 amp hour Miati batteries. The form factor alone isn't worth the hassle of such a low high voltage disconnect. You can find links to all three batteries and my 36 amp hour and 16 amp hour battery review in the description below. Thanks for watching.